What's up, I'm Power Axe Crude. Today's video, well, let's just say we're kind of, I'm kind of cutting this in between doing something else. And you'll notice that whenever I release the other video, doing my stretch, as you can see here, you guys are getting kind of a preview, so I'm going to release the video I'm going to show you here in a moment before I do the, release the stretch. Uh, you can see I told back half it right here. It's going to be flatbed, pickup truck style. Really cool. I'm really digging it through some suggestions of some of my subscribers and you know I really dig the idea and got to look at some pictures and stuff and I was like it was really super cool I had to do it and so if a kit is coming from Motobuilt that's tying in back here then my spring hangers up here and the 8.8 uh, .8 kit I do the 8.8 .8 conversion that's coming from rough stuff specialties but here's my dilemma Look at this crap here. Now I really don't know what I'm getting into here. I don't know if it's a big massive hole in the frame right here or they just took and put some plate there to patch up or brace or something like that. But it goes from here, it goes under and it goes to the other side. I don't know if this is like half a frame right here. I don't know. So here's my dilemma. I was gonna continue on with the stretch video, but in the process of me having to cut all this crap right here out it's gonna make that video too long but it's, so, so what I'm gonna do is it's a very common thing for the YJs for people who's wanting to patch, uh, do a patch repair for holes in the frame stuff like that so I think that would be an awesome video so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this crap right here out but because of not knowing what I'm getting into here I may go ahead and jack stand the back back here just to keep from it flexing any Cut this junk out, patch in some new metal before I put my new spring hangers in, because that scares me, to be honest with you. I can see me just ha out having a good time. Next thing I know, my frame is a two piece. Yeah, not cool. Because I've got, where was that? Right here, here, and here that I need to patch in. So, today's video, we're doing some frame patch repair. I know that I released the video where I did the patch plates here, where somewhat did them. Uh, I, did I showed you guys where I did not weld them in, so what I may end up doing is using those same patch plates down here. So, anyway, first things first, you can see I've already started cutting with the plasma. And I thought, you know what, this would just make a good video showing people how to patch your frame in. Even if you're just using scrap metal like what I'm going to be doing mostly. So, here we go. I'm going to finish cutting that mess out. But, if this is the first time you've been on Power Axe YouTube channel, be sure to subscribe. So I do Jeep videos, car videos, motorcycle videos, uh, tool videos, review videos, all kinds of cool stuff, and you may just learn something. So be sure to hit that subscribe button. So you know what? No the gabbing. Let's play with Rust Bucket. Well, I figure those really crappy patches right there is probably wrapping the whole frame, because look, I was taking my air chisel thingy, and well, the thing that busts rust up, and... I kept knocking holes in, so I took a hammer beat on it a little bit, and look, that's ripping apart too. And I'm getting rained on, dang it. That weld separating, they didn't even halfway prep that. So I'm going to have to patch this whole section right here. I see that coming. Now, I'm hoping my camera's getting rained on. Come over here with a hammer. That's solid. Right there, not so much. Right there, soft. So I want to patch right through here, probably. That's solid. That's solid. Dude, that was good. I may still brace it on the bottom anyway. But that side right there, I'm going to wrap that whole section. I see it coming. So, it is what it is. I've got plenty of plates, so I can wrap all that whole section right there. And heck, I made just for kicks and giggles. Because I do have some softness of metal right here. I may just go ahead and brace that back up as, as well. But like I said earlier, when the body mount forward is good as far as the frame goes. But from there back, it just, oh. Yeah, everybody keeps telling me, Go buy a new frame. Go buy a new frame. Let me tell you something, folks. Around these parts, 
anybody says, oh, you got a tail light for a Jeep. Oh, wow, let's charge you $1,000 for it. Everybody thinks of gold. Don't get it wrong. I love these I love these old rigs. They're so easy to work on. Yeah, this is kind of a pain to tell, but honestly, I can handle it because I got the tools to do it. But to go out piece part one together, you can honestly go buy another rig for less money than piece part one together around here. I mean, it really is. So, oh well. Hear the rain? I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. As soon as I get that thing where I'm able to roll it around again, I'm putting my Mustang out in the driveway. I'm rolling that sucker under the carport and start wiring lots up under my carport so I can keep this going. Because it is a beautiful day as far as temperature-wise. It's not crazy hot. But, I mean, I can't have my camera out here when it's raining. So you guys miss footage. I can work in the rain, but I didn't get the video footage for you, you know? So, I'm shaving this weld out. Look right there. I'm not going to touch it because it's hot. But right there, they just didn't prep the metal when it was trying to be welded. So the weld didn't even bond through here at all. I mean, it's just like, through here, it kind of looks like it has. But then you get right here where it separates. And as I'm taking the plasma cutter, you see a few places that it looks like, it looks like it's bonded, but it's not. The metal didn't mix at all when it was welded. So, let me show you guys a little plasma cutter tip. Everybody knows that you take a plasma and go boom, blow a hole through some, you know, cut it, cut it like that. Now this is, this plasma, I have got it turned down right now. I don't have it turned all the way up. It does pretty, it does a really, really good job. It's not even an expensive one for that matter. But whenever you cut, if I'm going to cut this weld up, I don't want to cut the parent metal. When you cut like straight here, that's an awful lot of metal for it to blow through. So you come through, come through it, come through it, and come up and just keep shaving the weld out. And you can keep coming back like it till you finally get down to the parent metal, to the main frame right here, I should go ahead and say, that um, easier to see. I may not have to remove as much metal as I thought, or at least I can control how much metal I need to cut out. Other than just going, <laughs> blowing a hole through it all, and thinking, well, I could have shaved, I could have saved part of that. So let me show you. So you guys get the point, you see right there again, all the way through, then I bet you I find that all the way through here, that patch is absolutely useless on the weld. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the rest of this out, but I just want to show you guys a little trick and show you how crappy the weld job was as making this metal even, uh, there's no strength here at all. All right, check this out. I got in behind here and split that weld right through here, well, a little bit of it was bonding. I'll look over here. right there is the weld bead absolutely not penetrated into anything back here nothing and you see right there i took a hammer and got him behind and pried it away from it well wasn't bonded to anything that is why you clean your metal first and make sure you got decent penetration into the both both metals well, I got that mess cut out of the way. Now, can y'all give me any idea how this rig got the name Rust Bucket? I mean, does anything give you a clue at all? Golly. You know what? That's a topic for a good video. How does your rig get your name? Look at this mess. It just keeps going. Jeez. Now the top plate up here, I've drilled, I knocked a hole through the top of this with a plasma cutter because that's going to be my new body mount right there. Instead of putting them on these, I put it straight to the top of the frame for a couple of different reasons. One, no rock hanging right there. And for two, I mean, it moves everything, everything inboard, so I just liked it better to be honest with you. But when I knocked a hole in the top up here, I didn't see another mess up here which I didn't look at in detail either, but the metal was solid up on the top part of the rail here top part of the frame oh my gosh look at this mess so hmm. I'm gonna keep beating through here I guess I'm gonna take a claw hammer and beat it through here see how far this goes and because I need to tie some new metal in here somewhere 
Project Rust Bucket, totally earned its name, but right here, frame's cracked. Yeah, Rust Bucket definitely is named correctly. I can still save it, but good lord. Alright, let's see what else I can find. What do y'all think? Think I'm about to get rained out? Man, I got nothing but time on my hands all this week. And this is what I got to deal with. That's how the luck rolls, I guess. Oh, I just got a raindrop on smack in my hair, eyeball. I think I need to put my junk up and get in the house before I get really, well, before my tools get wet. Not too late, get wet. Open this up a little bit more of the plasma so I can get the shop back inside there, get some of this junk out, and I'm realizing there's a, whole, there's a lot of mud right inside here. Which means this thing has some mud and fun, mud holes. No blame. Mud can be kind of fun, but mud's definitely not my favorite. Mud breaks stuff. The rock crawl ain't nowhere near as bad as mud. But big rust pile right there. I'm gonna take the shop back, suck the rest of this junk out of there. So uh, I'm cutting this right here out, splitting it down the middle right here to save that metal right here to help keep a little bit of rigidity going on. And then all of a sudden I bump it a little bit and I'll, I'll thought, what the heck? Really? Look. Oh, it's still hot. All back through here and it's all broken loose. So here's my saving grace for something not moving. All the metal up here, when I cut this out up through here, that is still nice and thick. I still got plenty of meat up in here. It looks really good. That plus I've got my jack stands right there supporting the back end. So that's not going to allow in the my back frame or anything like that to move. So if you guys ever have to do this, you know, jack stand support the rear to prevent the frame from flexing. All this up here, this radius and all this is pretty solid. So I really don't have a whole lot of choice other than going ahead and taking out all the way through here and across through here and go ahead and start cutting in and welding in new metal. So yeah, I just want to show you guys that, that, you know, my being nice and tedious right here to try to take it out of sections to keep it strong isn't going to work because it's already broke loose back here. But that's okay. I can, I can handle it. I can do this. I can do this. Look, Ma, no frame. Well, almost. Being that all this back up in here anyway on the back side was pretty much disconnected. So, yeah, I went ahead and cut it all out. The metal up here is still pretty solid, even though it looks rough. But it's still good and thick, so it's still holding stuff together. Aside from that little crack right there. But I bet you that was because of driving and this joint right here, this section was flexing so much that it caused that crack because of the uh, booger welds that wasn't even sticking. So now I'm going to use my little template right here. Cut me two pieces of 3-8 plate. 3-8, golly. 3 16 is going this side and this side. Then I'll cut me a piece of plate to join that curve right through here. Now the reason I left this right here in place is when I put my new spring hangers in from Motorbuilt, I'm going to locate from the center line of this to the center line of the new one on both sides. Therefore I can use these holes to be sure I got up evenly spaced and I'm not going to knock my axle crooked or anything. So that's kind of where I'm at at the moment. can notice the slag coming off right through here used to I would take a grinder and knock all this stuff off which it worked just fine but my little handy dandy new tool here yeah you're trying to make a short order of that slag
beveled the edges down, cleaned them up real well so I get a good solid bite with my weld. I can get up into here real well. Of course, it ain't like perfectly straight, but I did cut it with a plasma cutter and I can come back with a grinder and shape it like I need it. So, not a big deal. Uh, once I got kind of clamped up there, take my level, pop it on the bottom right here. And see where it comes down to where it's just about, where it's running about tangent with this right here. So you draw your line straight down, and then you hit your radius, it comes down straight here. So this is going to be your tangent point coming down here. So it looks like I can bump this up just a little bit, but really it's going to depend on whether I take my 316s I cut for the bottom. If I go inside of it, okay, it'll be okay on the inside. If I run to the outside, run the bead out here, which will be easier to weld, honestly. So what I'll probably do is bump this up some more, which will put this above the frame rail. But once I get everything tacked into place, then I can come with the grinder, shape everything in, then burn my welds in. So it looks like I need to bump that up just a little bit because it needs to be, you know, 3 16 or so above that. Now, honestly, it's not really that critical as far as the depth, overall depth and stuff. But what is critical, and I say somewhat critical, is that my new uh, spring hangers from Motobuilt, a factory YJ frame is two and a half inches wide. So by the time I add all this other metal in, it's going to be much wider than that. So, what I may end up having to do is before I put my bottom plate in, take my clamp, you know, tack here, tack a few series up through here, then the weld on the other side, tack the plate in on that side, squeeze the two in till it's two and a half inches from this surface to the backside surface of the other plate. Once I get that two and a half inches established, then where my new uh, spring hangers should actually slide up there and fit correctly. As it stands right now, I'm either going to have to take my... I'll tell you what, be right back. I'm going to go get them. I'll show you. Let me zoom back a little bit. Now, here's the spring hangers. Because they go up in here like this somewhat. Well, as it stands right now, this spread right here is about two and a half inches. Because it fit, they're designed to work with the uh, factory YJ width. So they're going to be too wide. So I have to squeeze them in to where this fits inside there. And these plate surfaces here and here are parallel with each other. You don't want them canned outward or inward or anything like that because then you bind your bushings. So plate here, tack it in, plate over there, tack it in, make my strap that comes through here for the two and a half inches of width, then squeeze them in just enough to accommodate this. That's what I'm thinking, but I know it's going to tow it in. And now, of course, up in here, this is going to stay that two and a half. These are going to be told, you know, coming in like that. Not a big deal, honestly. Because my only other option would be was to shave the insides of these down, which I really don't want to alter these at all. I'd rather work with the frame width to make these fit than to alter these to fit the frame. Because I'm not going to lose any strength by taking, you know, pulling these in to fit that. I'm not going to lose any strength out of these whatsoever. So, besides, that's 3 sixteenths, way thicker than the factory metal ever was. So once all this right here is welded in, I'm not gonna have any more issues with uh, weakness of the frame. So that's where I'm at, at the moment. Um, I'm gonna bump that up from my tangent points. I want my bottom plate to be welded from the bottom so I can run my bead this way because it will be a lot easier to land on my back and get burned by the welder. So, okay, that's where I'm at, at the moment. That's what I'm doing. Got this plate tacked in here. Got 3 16 2 inch coming out through here. Because what I didn't have any 2.5 or 3 inch width. Only thing I had was 2 here. So and I, I wanted to get this tacked in before I quit. So I did the, did the 2 inch, put it out through there, but I tucked it inside instead of capping on the outside, like I mentioned before. But by putting it inside, and this is 3 16 I squeeze. I took my clamps and squeezed it just enough to create that two and a half inch width through here. Then put that two inch inside that and tacked it as it went down through here. Now, coming straight down off of this, get into here. This was pretty well flush to begin with, and you see I didn't cut my plates exactly um, exact size with each other. But that's all right. Grinder take care of that. Now flex the metal a little bit more, tacked here and here. Then as coming up through here, I was either pushing. I was having to give me a bar and get beside here, push down on the metal a little bit, tacked here, here. Now I'm having to make this bend. So at that point, I didn't, this was not in there. I was taking a hammer and beating this upward 
until I got the point to where I could tack here and here. Hammer a little bit more, tacked here and here. Then stuck this inside there, leveraged up on this right here, and as I pushed down on it, as the weight pushed down on this bar, I was able to get my tack in here and here. So basically, long story short, as you come down through here and as you progressively have to bend this, each time you get it at a tangent point to where it's even across here and both sides, both plates, tack it so it stays. Bend it a little bit more, tack it again so it stays. Bend it a little bit more, tack it so it stays. And so on and so on until you get all the way out here at the end. You see, I was able to get inside here to run me a good solid bead on the inside. So, that's where I'm at, at the moment. Now I'm going to cut me, cut me another pattern to lay right here and to bring it up through here. So I'm going to get my little construction paper out and make me a pattern go up through here. Then I'll take my grinder, clean it up all the way through here to, you know, give me a good solid, nice bite for the weld. Now our next step, we got a cap from here to up here. So get out the construction paper again, make me a pattern, lay it against this, trace it, get this angle right here, because look, here it's not 90 degrees. So come down, I'm gonna trace this out right here on the construction paper, bring it up this way, take, take a construction paper, lay it on a piece of metal, cut it out, weld it in. So long story short, that's pretty much what you do to the rest of it, even down here. And I'm going to run it up. I need to take that weld out a little bit right there so I can get in here flush to make sure that's capped off correctly. And, of course, break. I think I'm going to, if I cap from across here, I'm going to leave this open for right now until I get my new spring hangers mounted in. Therefore, I can go ahead and take out some more metal here and make that correct, brace that up like it needs to be. So I'm going to leave, I'll probably cap it right here for the strength. But the bottom side, I'm going to leave it open for right now so I, until I get this off. So, for right now, I'm going to grind all that crap off and build this. See you in a little bit. Oh, so just also, just for, I don't think it goes without saying, whatever you do over here to cap with uh, scrap metal, of course, you know you can do the other side the same way. What you do on one side, you do on the other, so there's no point in me videoing what's going on over there. Which, you, obviously, I haven't done anything over there yet. So, anyway. All the loose crusty metal right here took and cleaned it up real well with a big old wire brush and come back with a grinder wheel knocked all those edges down right there so I had a good smooth surface to work with I took a big chunk out right there because it was junk took the grinder made sure I had no surfaces no stuff sticking out on it so I made sure my metal laid flat and now I'm going to take this right here, which seals in the rust. Well, seals in the metal, prevent any more rust. Yeah, I realize that it may not protect the inside of it, but hey, anything helps. But yes, you're also right if you're saying, well, you can't weld that after you put it on it. Yeah, of course you're right. So once it dries, I'll come back over top of it, grind up all the paint, all the places that my weld's going to contact, and then I'll have a good place to tack it in, then come back and burn the weld in. Here we go. Cut holes in it right through here. I can plug weld through there. I can plug weld here, here, here. Well, you see the holes. I plug weld there. Oops, I shouldn't have knocked a hole there because I ain't got nothing to plug weld too. Plug weld there, there. Of course, then along all the seams. St stitch it together. Weld on it there. Well, you see what's going on. Uh, now, I'm still going to lay one more flat piece of plate across this right here. It'll butt up against this, it'll come down and butt against that, which is, you know, again, more reinforce all that right there because I had to take out so much metal. Even though this top plate right here is good, I still want to, I've got it, so why not? Y'all recognize that? Mm-hmm, that's a YJ bumper. Good weldable steel, 3 16ths thick, just like the steel I'm using here. The main thing is, grind off all the chrome. And... It is a steel, it's not stainless steel. Magnet sticks to it just as well as it does this right here, so we're good. The holes are knocked in here for plug welds, so I get in here and I fill all that full of weld to make sure I got bonding on the side. Of course, stitching around all the edges. Plug weld, plug weld. Oops, shouldn't have knocked a hole there. I'm gonna put another piece of plate down through here to reinforce that section because I had to take out so much metal. And of course, I'll right here is where that plate comes up through here the bar stock 
I've got just enough gap through here. I can fill that in with a good weld all the way through here. And of course, I'm going to make me another one to come through here to cover up all that. Knocked a big chunk out right there, so I'm going to take the rest of that bumper. And I'll make me a template to cut out the bumper section. Then I'll cut back that lip here so I can butt it together here. And I'll run me a seam, run me a bead up through here to tie all that together. Cool. Cool. Alright, it's just welding. You can see where I grind all the paint off through here, so I got a good place to weld to. Okay, I've got most of my frame wrap done. Now we need to fit this piece right here in. I measure from here to here, and this like I did a little extra trimming and cutting. It's like I cut it just a little bit short, but that's all right. I can fill it in with weld because the parent metal up here is pretty solid, so I'm good to go on that. But I'm having to bend this to the contour of this, and I have a uh, break. Sheet metal, uh, it's a sheet metal break, a finger, what's called a finger break. That, yeah, you don't want to put this kind of metal inside of it because it tears up the fingers on it pretty bad. So what I'm having to do is like figure out how am I going to bend this. Well, sometimes you just have to look around and see what you got available. So what I was doing is the back end of my stretch flatbed, whatever you want to call it, stick inside that right there. Okay, hope I ain't hitting the camera. I need to take a little bit of that bend right there out because it's just a little too much. Take, put this on there. Take, put my chest against it and just kind of nudge it. Okay, I took a little bit of that bend out. See, this is the top. And I need to put some, a little bit more bend in right here. So I'll tuck it in a little bit deeper, make the bend go a little deeper. This quarter inch wall could in exactly like. Sure, I'm not gonna hit the camera. You gotta be careful for it not to slip and fall and bust your face or something stupid, too. Okay, let's go see how that fits. Gotta put a little bit more bend in it. I'm sitting flush on this side now so I can tack this in. This is rise a little bit high, but that's easy enough to take care of because all I got to do is take a clamp, squeeze it down, it'll flex down enough to take care of that. Now, if you had a super strong and a big C clamp that had a long handle on it, you probably could have clamped it and squeezed it down, like go from here to here to here to here to come on down like that to squeeze it in place. But I used the rear frame members on this and a little bit of body weight to flex it where I need it. So I'm good to go. I can make this work. Okay, I tack these ends down right here where it will stay put. I took the clamp and wonder if you'd watch. See how it's kind of high right there? I'll take my clamp and squeezes it right down to where I need it to be. Right there. See, now I'm flush across all that. Now, if you guys got a sharp eye, you'll see that this plate is actually overhanging this a little bit, which is okay. Because what I'll do is once I get everything tacked in, I'll take the plasma, come in this way, shoot at an angle, and trim that excess metal off. Because honestly, if I have to do any grinded, clean, overhang or anything like that, I'd rather do it out here where it's easier to get to than back up inside the tub right here to where it's a pain in the tail to get to. So I'll go through and make me a series of tacks through here, here, and then back here to hold it in place. And then I'll trim that with a plies and burn it baby in. Well, crap. I'm out of wire. Bummer. And it's going to be about four days before I get a chance to go buy another, uh, buy another roll. Because i got to go back to work. Hugh my roll. Hugh my roll. Oh, well, let's show you what i got done. Mm -hmm. That doesn't look much better. Remember that big gaping hole that was right here? And the hole, holes up through here. Much better. Tied in all the way up here to the stretch. Got my weld done in here. This is that crossbar where the uh, gas tank tied into. There's a big, huge, gaping hole right there, so I just kept stacking my welds and filling that in. Uh, you can see where my plug welds were. I need to touch up some of those, or if I want to be that picky. Still ain't got this plate burned in. I ran out of wire. And the big gaping hole there's all plugged up. Much better. I don't know. See, I got the smooth side in. I ground out around through there for it to, uh, Good clean weld, but this plate right here's got some kind of junk all over it. It's like a 
it's a kind of loom splatter all over the steel. So you can see I ground my welds back, ground the plate back to get a clean weld. So it's much better. Still gotta give me some wire, finish it up next week. If you've got a bunch of scrap plate to play with, let's go over and summarize a few things, okay? Summarizing mean, I'm gonna show you guys how I got all my templates. Plain Jane, get your touch paper, you go buy it, Walmart or wherever. Get in behind here. Of course, I've got this crossbar right here in my way. You just simply take and say if you want to chop it right there, put your vertical mark there. If you come outside your radius right here, stop it right there. Because if you got some straight stuff, you continue with that. If you make your uh, curve pieces out of uh, the scrap plate, you end up conserving more material that way. Because the channel I've got through here, this this channel through here is actually an OG YJ bumper. Uh, it's very weldable. I've used it on other projects before. It works out great. So I made my little template, which is actually a lot bigger because of my plating. But just cut that out and see right there. Bring it down here. Bring it down here. And this curve is actually going to come down because I had a crossbar in the way. But you just got to imagine where. If it were to come down when you draw it on your plate, on your plate, it'll come across like this, and it'll come down like that, sort of. If you were drawing it on the plate, that is, and not on my jeep. So then you trace that out, chop it out. Now you can use uh, abrasive cutoff wheels, whatever. You, I happen to have a plasma, and some of you are gonna be saying, "Hey, those are expensive." Well, to be honest with you, none of my, my welder or my plasma is not a high dollar units. They're not very expensive. So. The main thing is in doing this stuff is just make your patterns for that radius, for the radius down here at the bottom. Therefore, you can cut your curve pieces. Tack here, tack here, then fill in the blanks with your uh, bar stock, whether it be two and a half or three inch, uh, two inch or three inch, or whatever it is you have laying around. A lot of the bar stock stuff you can pick up at um, Home Depot, uh, Tractor Supply, some of your places like that. Because if you remember, let me grab the camera off the stand. Down here on this end, where I have not welded yet because I run out of wire, is two and a half inches wide at the bot at the base right here. Remember, that's because my new spring hangers are going right here, so I gotta can maintain that width to be able to put my hangers in. So which was a two-inch bar stock down here. I squeezed the sides in with the clamp, tacked them, run the bead. And everything up through here, I maintained its width and just kind of capped over top of it because all this up through here is just irrelevant to the hanger itself. So no need of making work I didn't have to do. Now let's talk about how I bent this piece and this piece. Both of those are 3 16 bar stock. This is 3 inch, that's also 3 inch width by 3 16 thick. Okay, this seam is somewhere along in, about long in here somewhere. Then I measure that out. And there you go for that length. Here, pretty much did the same thing. Now, to make them bend, of course, when I stuck this piece right here, and it's going to be straight from this point to this point, I stuck the edge of it right here against this piece here. Let me zoom back a little bit. It ain't zooming. Okay, anyway. So I stuck the end of this curve, the flat piece that ended up being curved, against the edge of this. You can see kind of the seam right here tacked it with this side, tacked it this side, and burning it hard tack right in the middle of it. I didn't want to weld it completely in because I wanted it to flex a little bit. Then I just took a hammer and beat the out of it and drove it straight up until I bent it. It's pretty well contoured. Then I took the clamps here, put like this, squeezed real hard, which then allowed me, as the curve was kind of forming, squeeze it real hard, I would tack, tack on each side, Put the uh, clamps right here, which squeezes it up hard inside that radius. Tack, tack each side. Then this side was it was kind of hanging down a little bit, so I took the hammer, smacked it up a little bit again. Clamped, went tack, tack, then burned my welds in. Now up here, I think it's kind of obvious how I made it happen. You can see where the hammer was doing its damage, but nonetheless, uh, it's about right along in 
here. Where's my cement? Right there it is. Right there's where it was asked. So of course, your bar stock is sticking straight up this way. Stick straight out. That's not going to work, is it? Of course not. So, taking tack my welds in. Put a hard tack here. Good deep tack here. And a good deep one in the center. Nothing out this way yet. Take the hammer and bumping it forcing it to bend over then taking the clamp again going from here to here when I did that allowed me to tack from here to here then beat take the hammer and beat it down some more which for, slowly forming that radius but what happens is whenever you're beating it with a hammer you tend to make this end curl up depending on how you hit it so after I tacked here and here, of course, now I move my clamp up a little further, go along in here, and basically you're just watching for the metal to touch as it comes around that radius. And each time you're hitting it with a hammer and clamping it, and you get it to touch, tack, tack. Now, once I get the metal to this point right here, I'm clamping all the way out here, and it's, it's rolling over this drop right here. Tack, tack, get that in right there, then I get the hammer and beat the end of it. To get to force down, then I clamp it right there, tack, 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 boom, and tack in here. And that's pretty much how I do it, just hammering with the uh, standard, wherever the heck my hammer's at, there it is. Just a plain channel hammer, just beat this sucker down to mercy, clamp it down, run your tacks on the edge, hold in place. That's pretty much it. So, today's video is a prime example of what to do if you don't have those parts. Could I have ordered those parts and put them in? Of course I could. But did I want to wait on them? No, I didn't. And I had the scrap stuff laying around, so I'll just go ahead and play it like that. That's besides that, in 3 16ths around that wall like that, you know it's going to be strong then. Uh, the other side, the passenger side, it's got some weak spots. But I still think I'm going to go ahead and bring it on down and brace it. But there's really no point in me videoing all that process because the process on the driver's side that I showed you guys is going to be the same process on the other side. No point in making the video crazy long for that, you know? So just use your construction paper and a sharpie marker to make your patterns so you know how to transfer it to the metal to cut it out. And you can take cutoff wheels, but if you happen to have a plasma, it makes life so much easier. I promise you people, once you go plasma, you can never go back. You can never go back. So uh, in making your curves and your bends, hammer is your friend. And I showed you a little trick of sticking in the end of the uh, framework and taking my chest and bumping against it making that bend that worked out real well so just little tips and tricks when I mean, you don't have the big boy tools to make things happen so everyone if you enjoyed that video hit me that thumbs up subscribe if you haven't and leave some cool comments down below and everyone i really appreciate you hanging out with me peace out later y'all